Here, you hold the camera for a second. <laughs> you know that thing where you don't know something exists and then you find out it exists and you absolutely have to have it? I had that experience last week when I was at Colonial Williamsburg. As someone who is completely obsessed with history and also makes homemade bread on a very regular basis, I don't know how I didn't know that dough bowls were a thing. But as soon as I found out they were a thing, I had to have one. I had my friend Jeb, who I'm pretty sure is a living relative of Paul Bunyan himself, come and show me how this process is done. We have a problem with the fact that you're it. six foot six and yeah. I'm three foot four. Yeah, I'm a little bit taller than you. <laughs> okay, try that again. <laughs> All right, so even though the pith isn't in the center, we're starting at the track. We're taking it out and this is actually something you taught me. I like how you use a sledgehammer the way that I use like a framing hammer. So I hear a lot of concerned folks in my comment sections telling me that they are very worried about the mushroomed edges on my wedges shooting off and killing me. You normally want to wear safety glasses and always come back through with a grinder. And good cut thing off you're those. setting such a good example here, yeah. huh? Yeah, good. Perfect. Uh, safety see. glasses. Safety first, second, and third, my friends. So you're going to do a magic trick? Yeah, so sometimes you can take it and when you're on concrete, you can... What? Okay. For comparison, I'm going to do the next part myself and uh, prepare to laugh. I'm gonna start at that pit and chase the line over. Yes! Oh, by the way, everyone, make sure you're wearing your safety slippers to do this. Hiya! Yeah! Are you ready, Howdy? Here we go. Here, you hold the camera for a second. <laughs> Good news, we have a lot of overseers here to give us advice. Howdy would like you to uh, pay very close attention to him. Howdy, back up, Bubba. Hey, excuse me, young man. We don't need your advice right now. Hey -ya! Hey -ya! I have the right tool for the job. There you go. Now it should just fall right apart. Here we go. Let's get after it. <laughs> now the real work begins. Packers are creating quite a scene behind us here. Excited to be out and about. Spring is in the air. All right, back to our bowl. Figure out how to make the most of what we have here. So we're gonna go down here, and come across, and that's gonna be our bottom. And we wanna just kinda eye it out and sketch it. Get some nice even lines. It may look small. I mean, I feel like we need an and for scale cause like, Listen, this is gonna be a dough bowl that I can lay inside of. We have a lot of trips here, getting tools and bringing them to the right place. Uh, but hold on, what's happening here? Uh, well, it's spring. Well, okay. All right. All right, so we're gonna basically draw out our lines and we're gonna start knocking off as much of that wood as we, as we can. Now the rest by hand. Yep. <laughs> they say it's good in life to be humbled on occasion, and um, I thought I was getting pretty good at using an axe and a hatchet, and then he came to visit, and well, now I consider myself a toddler hatchet user once again. And now I've got two sides. Oh, look at that. Fairly equal. It's almost like a bowl already. My friend Jimmy Dresta says that you need to film every step where something changes shape. And I think that's really good advice. But here's the, the bowl is about to change shape. We're going to start carving out the middle. And young sir, tell us, tell us how to do that. All right. So on this bowl, we're going to do, we're going to do a vertical cut here, a vertical cut here and say another one here. And what we're going to do is make those chops. And then we're gonna come in between and start knocking out those pieces. All right, so now once we've got these two little gullets here, then you're gonna come back with the hewing hatchet and take advantage of Wood's weakness. I actually made a video restoring these two hewing hatchets and I specifically made a right-handed and a left-handed version. And you can find that on my YouTube channel. So restoring these hatchets and now they're being used for their intended purpose. I imagine that you holding that camera there is more, is like watching like a petulant child with like some terrifying implement. 
They're like my favorite animal. They dr I had this one guinea fowl that like would drive at him insane and it was my favorite. I'm like, I actually just ordered a bunch more. All right, so our next step here is to move to hand planes. Yep. We're gonna clean off this edge with your gutter plane. Get your mind out of the gutter. It's just a plane for me. We're gonna kind of use this like a scrub plane and see how rough this is. With the scrub, pl scrub plane or a gutter plane, we have a nice rounded plane and you have that rounded blade in there. This one's a little bit wore down, but it does a good job of taking a good bit of heft off and it can work through those big ships. So you know that line about professionals make everything look easy? I just, this entire process, every time I start feeling good about myself using an ax, using an adz, using a plane or whatever, he picks up a tool again and makes me realize that I have many, many improvements and three feet of height and mass that I need to uh, grow into. In contrast to his expertise, my little blistery fingers from the last several days of overuse. They're not used to this. We went three solid years without regular woodworking projects and now here we are making up for lost time in a huge way. A lot of tear out there. A lot of tear up. So would you say that there's a lot of people that still like doing this completely by hand? Yeah. Uh, probably not, no. <laughs> no, there's not very many people. And the more I think about it, you know, I can, it's completely understandable. Well, I'll tell you, I mean like, if I didn't have you here being Paul Bunyan in while I'm resting my dainty little fingers, I mean, we would be working on this for months. In fact, when he first told me that we could do this in one day, yeah. I was like, absolutely not. I cannot imagine removing that much material by hand. Here, look, I will show you the floor and you'll see what we've done so far. Mostly him. All of that has come from this. The reason my bench is so short is actually for specific things like this, so that it's possible for me, a tiny little elf, to do them. However, for you, you're like breaking your back bent all the way over trying to be up here. Also, I think it's appropriate that in honor of St. Patrick's Day, we're carving green wood. The funniest thing about this is that there's actually a hand plate in his hands, but you can't see it. Yeah. Which, <laughs> in my hands, it's <laughs> a giant useful tool. But in his defense, he actually has a regular sized tool, but it's worn out, so time to build another one. And in the meantime, we said we were going to finish our bowl in one day. So if that means we have to mouse it out with that tiny little thing, oh, we shall. All right, we've got our bowl secured here, and now we're gonna use this trusty gutter plane again to plane off the top. And we have a beautiful bowl-shaped object on one side, and now what do we need to do next? We need to take off these edges so it yeah. doesn't split, so right? We're shaping out the corner and then shaping out the slope on the back. Perfect. And we're gonna do that with the cutting hatchet. I mean, I could be satisfied by calling this a bowl. It is in fact a bowl. Whether it's complete or not is really up to anyone else's judgment. And my tennis elbow. <laughs> I'm getting pretty tired. <laughs> How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Good advice. It was good work up there, Adam. You gotta do what you gotta do. Skew and slice makes everything up. This poor workbench hasn't seen so much strain in like seven millennia. Holding on by a thread. Termites holding hands down there. Ah! These are the last few shavings. Ta-da! Look too closely, everyone. We didn't technically finish it, but we got it as far as it can possibly go without drying more. Yeah, we can't actually finish carve it right now or it will implode. So this is great. Now we tuck the baby in 
so she can dry slowly in her own shavings. And how long till she's really dry? It's going to take about three to four months till it's dry enough to really finish out. So we've got to wait for that grain to dry out enough that we can scrape it and we can finish it out fully because at this point it's going to tear on us constantly with how wet it is. So in four months we'll have a pizza party. I feel like we should get a shot of you holding it and then of me holding it so we can get some perspective. <laughs> This is a perfect um, dugout canoe for my guinea pig. Yeah. And we'll take it for a float in the pond tomorrow. I will just remind everyone that 12 short minutes ago, this was an enormous log that he hefted out of his truck. Eat an elephant, one bite at a time. I think it's pretty safe to say that without Jeb's help, I was not gonna get anywhere near finished with this. And the funniest part about this whole thing is that after we were like, halfway through this project, Jeb actually told me that he had never himself, nor had he ever heard of anyone doing one of these in a day completely by hand. And if no one was watching, I absolutely would have pulled up my angle grinder and or my chainsaw. But I think that it is so awesome from time to time to take on a ridiculous, silly project like this and to do it completely by hand, just to A, prove that you can, which always feels good, but also to really garner an appreciation for your angle grinder and your chainsaw when in fact you do choose to use them. Because looking at that pile of shavings on the floor was the most eye-opening experience for me. Thinking about every single one of those chips being an actual movement of one of our arms, a chip from an ax or an adze, a shaving from a hand plane or a draw knife or a spoke shave. I mean, we started with a log that weighed 360 pounds and this weighs about 40 pounds now. It's not dry, we still have to wait three or four months before it will be. But the thing that's most interesting to me about this project is that it's basically a giant spoon. You're using bigger spoon carving tools, but you're still using spoon carving tools. And this is kind of where I've built my chops as a woodworker. And if you want to learn how to carve spoons or to get your start so that you understand how you can make giant crazy things like this without them cracking or warping or, you know, just like exploding or imploding upon themselves, check out my Squarespace website. On my blog there, I have all kinds of resources about spoon carving, green woodworking, wood preservation, picking which wood to use, safely using hand tools. The blog goes on and on because I've been writing blog posts on there for 12 years. And in that 12 year period, Squarespace has been a fantastic resource for me. Someone who's not super tech savvy, someone who doesn't like spending very much time on the computer. And it gives me an opportunity to drag and drop everything that I want to share with the world into a beautiful artist design template and then share it with the world. So if you're thinking of starting a website of your own, if you've got a gallery of photos you want to share or a business that you want to start, Squarespace is a fantastic resource and they have supported me and my business for the last five years. Check out Squarespace as a resource and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash and you'll get a 10% discount. You are a hero among men. And come again soon. <laughs> All right. Oh, Lucy, what are you doing here? <laughs> well, try not to run over. I'll open the gate. <laughs>